Chapter 15 of Aids to Forensic Medicine and Toxicology by W.G. Atchison Robertson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Aspergine, October 2009, Sydney, Australia. Gaseous Poisons Carbon Dioxide Carbon dioxide is a product of combustion and respiration, and is generated in many ways during fermentation. It is a constituent of choke damp due to explosions in coal mines, and is given off from lime kilns, brick kilns and cement works. It is often met with in dangerous quantities in wells and in brewers' vats. From 10 to 15 percent in the atmosphere would prove fatal, but even 2 percent inhaled for long would produce serious symptoms. The proportion usually present in air is 0.04%. Symptoms. Inhalation of the pure gas causes spasm of the glottis, insensibility and death from asphyxia at once. Diluted cause sense of weight in forehead and back of head, giddiness, vomiting, somnolence, loss of muscular power. Insensibility stertorous breathing, lividity of face and body, and death from asphyxia, convulsions occasionally. Post-mortem appearances, face swollen and livid, or calm and pale. Lividity is most marked in eyelids, lips, ears, etc. Limbs usually flaccid, abdomen distended, right side of heart, lungs and large veins, gorged with dark colored blood, brain and membranes congested. Treatment. Pure air, cold effusion, stimulants, artificial respiration, galvanism, inhalation of oxygen, venesection, transfusion. Carbonic oxide. This is one of the most poisonous of gases. It is evolved in the process of burning charcoal and coke in stoves or furnaces. Water gas, obtained by passing steam over heated coke, contains 40% of the substance, the remainder being chiefly hydrogen. It forms the chief part of the deadly choke damp after an explosion in a mine. 2% in the atmosphere is immediately fatal. Symptoms. When in large amount, insensibility comes on at once. When in very small amounts, headache, giddiness, Noises in the ears, nausea and vomiting with prostration, insensibility and coma. There may be convulsions. Even in cases which recover, permanent impairment of the brain may result. Post-mortem appearances. The blood is bright red in colour due to the interaction of carbonic oxide with haemoglobin. A rosy hue of the skin surface and viscera is often noticed. Bright red patches of colour are found over the surface of the body. The spectrum of the blood is characteristic. Treatment. Ammonia to the nostrils, inhalation of oxygen, cold douche in moderation, artificial respiration, transfusion of blood. Coal gas. Coal gas contains light, carburetted hydrogen or marsh gas. Olefiant gas, ammonia, sulfuretted hydrogen, carbonic acid, carbonic oxide, free hydrogen and nitrogen. Coal gas has an offensive odour, burns with a yellowish white flame, yielding water and carbonic acid. Cases of poisoning often due to escape of gas into the room. Symptoms. Headache and giddiness, foaming at mouth, vomiting, convulsions, tetanic spasms, stertorous breathing, dilated pupil. The breath smells of gas. There is profound stupor. The patient, if alive, exhales gas from the lungs when removed into a fresh room or into the air. Smell of gas in the room and in patient's breath. Post-mortem appearances. Pallor of skin and internal tissues. Florid color of neck, back and muscles. If much CO present in the coal gas, fluid florid blood infiltration of lungs. Treatment. 
fresh air, artificial respiration, cold effusion, diffusible stimulants, inhalation of oxygen freely. Sulfuretted hydrogen is characterized by its odor, like that of rotten eggs. It is extremely poisonous. Symptoms. Giddiness, pain and depression in stomach, nausea, loss of power, delirium, tetanus and convulsions. Post-mortem appearances. Fluid and black blood, sulph hemoglobin, smell of H, 2, S, on opening the body. Loss of contractility of muscles. Rapid putrefaction. Treatment, fresh air, stimulants, inhalation of chlorine. Tests. Acetate of lead throws down a brown or black precipitate according to the quantity of the gas. Sewer gas. Cesspool emanations usually consist of a mixture of sulfuretted hydrogen, sulfide of ammonium, and nitrogen, but sometimes it is only deoxidized air with an excess of carbonic acid gas. Symptoms. If poison concentrated, death may ensue at once. If gas diluted, or exposure only short, insensibility, lividity, hurried respiration, weak pulse, dilated pupils, elevation of temperature to 104 degrees, tonic convulsions not unlike those of tetanus. Treatment, fresh air, oxygen with artificial respiration. Stimulants, hypodermic of strychnine and alternate hot and cold douche. Irritant gases are 1. Nitrous acid gas, 2. Sulfurous acid gas, 3. Hydrochloric acid gas, 4. Chlorine, 5. Bromine, 6. Ammonia. They have the common property of causing irritation and inflammation of the eyes, throat and air passages, and may cause spasm of the glottis, bronchitis and pneumonia. Sulfurous acid gas, one of the products of combustion of common coal. Hydrochloric acid gas, irrespirable when concentrated and very irritating when diluted, very destructive to vegetable life. Chlorine, used in bleaching and as a disinfectant, greenish yellow colour, suffocating odour. In poisoning, inhalation of sulfuretted hydrogen gives relief. Vegetable irritants. The chief vegetable purgatives are aloes, colocynth, gamboge, jalap, scammony, seeds of castor oil plant, croton oil, elaterium, the heliborus, and colchicum. All these have, either alone or combined, proved fatal. The active principle in aloes is aloin, of jalap, jalapin, of white hellebore, veratria, and of colchicum, colchicin. Morrison's pills contain aloes and colocynth. Aloes is also the chief ingredient in Holloway's pills. Symptoms. Vomiting, purging, tenesmus, etc., followed by cold sweats, collapse or convulsions. Post-mortem appearances, inflammation of alimentary canal, ulceration, softening, and submucous effusion of dark blood. Treatment. Diluents, opium, stimulants, abdominal fermentations, etc. Certain of these irritant poisons exert a marked influence on the central nervous system, as the following. Laburnum. Cetisus laburnum. All parts of the plant are poisonous. The seeds, which are contained in pods, are often eaten by children. It contains the alkaloid cytosine, which is also contained in arnica. It has a bitter taste and is powerfully toxic. Symptoms are purging, vomiting, restlessness followed by drowsiness, insensibility and convulsive twitchings. Death due to respiratory paralysis. Most of the cases are in children. 
Treatment consists of stomach pump or emetics, stimulants freely, artificial respiration, warmth and friction to the surface of the body. U. Taxus baccata contains the alkaloid taxine. The symptoms are convulsions, insensibility, coma, dilated pupils, pallor, laboured breathing, collapse. Death may occur suddenly. Treatment as above. Post-mortem appearances not characteristic, but fragments of leaves or berries may be found in the stomach and intestines. Arum. Arum maculatum. This plant, commonly known as lords and ladies, is common in the woods, and the berries may be eaten by children. It gives rise to symptoms of irritant poisoning, vomiting, purging, dilated pupils, convulsions, followed by insensibility, coma, and death. Many plants have an intensely irritating action on the skin, and when absorbed, act as active poisons. Rus toxicodendron is the poison oak or poison ivy. Poisoning by this plant is rare in England, though not uncommon in the United States. Mere contact with the leaves or branches will in many people set up an acute dermatitis with much edema and hyperemia of the skin. The inflammation spreads rapidly and there is formation of blibs with much itching. There is often great constitutional disturbance, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and pains in the abdomen. The effects may last a week and the skin may desquamate. Primula obconica is another plant which, when handled, gives rise to an acute dermatitis of an erysipelatus character. The face swells and large blisters form on the cheeks and skin. Opium and morphine. Opium, the inspissated juice of the unripe capsules of the Papava somniferum, as a poison, it is generally taken in the form of the tincture, laudanum, which contains one grain opium in 15 minims. Opium is found in almost all so-called soothing syrups for children and in Godfrey's cordial, Dalby's carminative and Collis Brown's chlorodyne. Laudanum contains 1% morphine and it, along with all other preparations, e.g. paragoric, which contain one or more percent morphine, are included in part one of the schedule of poisons and come under the dangerous drugs regulations. The most important active principles of opium are the alkaloids morphine and codeine. Symptoms usually commence in from 20 to 30 minutes. Giddiness, drowsiness and stupor, followed by insensibility. Patient seems asleep, may be roused by loud noise, but quickly relapses. Breathing slow and stertorous, pulse weak, countenance livid. As coma increases, pulse becomes slower and fuller. The pupils are contracted, even to a pin's point. They are insensible to the action of light. In deep natural sleep, the eyes are turned upwards and the pupils contracted. Bowels confined skin cold and livid or bathed in sweat, temperature subnormal, nausea and vomiting are sometimes present, remissions are not infrequent, the patient appearing about to recover and then relapsing. Hemorrhage into the ponds may give rise to contracted pupils. Young children and infants are especially susceptible to the poison. Diagnosis is not always easy and one has to differentiate poisoning from cerebral apoplexy. In the latter, one can seldom rouse the patient. The pupils are often unequal and hemiplegia is present. In compression of the brain, fracture of the skull may be present. Subconjunctival hemorrhages may be seen. The pupils are unequal and dilated and the paralysis increases. In uremic or diabetic coma, the urine must be examined. The habitual use of opium is not uncommon and opium eaters are able to take enormous quantities of the drug. The opium eater may be known by his attenuated body, withered yellow countenance, 
stooping posture and glassy sunken eyes. Post-mortem appearances, not characteristic. Turgescence of cerebral vessels. There may be effusion under arachnoid, into ventricles at base of the brain and around the cord. Rarely extravasation of blood. Stomach and intestines usually healthy, lungs gorged, skin livid. Fatal period, usually 9 to 12 hours, but in many cases, if life is prolonged for 8 hours, recovery takes place. Fatal dose, 4 grains of opium is the smallest fatal dose in an adult, or 1 drachma of laudanum. Children are proportionately much more susceptible to the action of opium than adults. Treatment. Stomach, tube, emetics, strong coffee or tea, ammonia to nostrils. Give 10 grains of permanganate of potassium in a pint of water, acidulated with sulfuric acid, and repeat the dose every half hour. Belladonna by mouth or atropine hypodermically. Patient must be kept roused by dashing cold water over him, flagellating the wet towel, walking about, etc. In conditions of collapse, however, this treatment must not be continued, but everything should be done to preserve the strength. Treatment must be continued as long as life remains. Method of extraction from the stomach. Opium itself cannot be directly detected, but we test for morphine and maconic acid. These may be separated from organic mixtures thus. Boil the organic matter with distilled water, spirit and acetic acid. Filter and to the fluid passed through add acetate of lead till precipitate ceases. Filter. Acetate of morphine passes through and meconate of lead remains. The solution of acetate or morphine may be freed from excess of lead by hydrogen sulfide and filtered. Excess of hydrogen sulfide driven off by heat and tests applied. Put the meconate of lead with water into a beaker and pass hydrogen sulfide. Sulfide of lead is formed and meconic acid set free. Filter. Concentrate the solution of meconic acid, allow a portion to crystallize and apply tests. Tests. Morphine and its acetate give an orange-red color with nitric acid becoming brighter on standing. Decompose iodic acid, setting free iodine with perchloride of iron, gives a rich indigo blue. With bichromate of potassium, green turning to brown. When the alkaloid is heated in a watch glass with a drop of strong sulfuric acid until the acid begins to fume, and is then allowed to get quite cold, a drop of nitric acid produces a brilliant red colour. The iodic acid test is very delicate but requires great care and may be used in the presence of organic matter. Meconic acid gives a blood red colour with perchloride of iron, not discharged by corrosive sublimate or chloride of gold. The similar colour produced by sulfocyanide of potassium and perchloride of iron is discharged by chloride of gold and corrosive sublimate. Morphine habit. Individuals who have acquired this habit take the drug usually by hypodermic injection. The victim suffers from nausea and vomiting and becomes so mentally debilitated that asylum treatment is required. Belladonna, hyoscyamus and stramonium. Belladonna. The root leaves and berries of the Atropa belladonna are poisonous from the presence of alkaloid atropine. Symptoms. Dryness of mouth and throat. Intense thirst. Dysphagia and dysphonia. Quick pulse. Noisy delirium and stupor. Stranguri and hematuria and redness of the skin, especially of the face, like that of scalatina, have been noticed. Dilation of the pupil occurs whether the poison be taken internally or applied locally to the eye. Post-mortem appearances. Congestion of cerebral vessels. Dilated pupils. Red patches in alimentary canal. Treatment. Wash out the stomach freely. A hypodermic injection of apomorphine as an emetic followed by hypodermic injections of pilocarpine or morphine tea, coffee or tannin to precipitate the alkaloid. Tests. 
atropine may be recognized by its action on the pupil. The chloroiodide of potassium and mercury precipitates it from very dilute solutions. Hyosiamus, henbane, Hyosiamus niger, Stramonium, thorn apple, Datura, stramonium. Symptoms, identical with those of belladonna and hyosiamus, the post-mortem appearances and treatment being also the same. Cannabis indica, Indian hemp, when smoked produces intoxication and mania. Hashish, used in the east as a narcotic, may cause persons to run amok and commit murder. Cocaine. Any dose above half a grain applied to a mucous membrane or injected hypodermically may give rise to alarming symptoms. These are intense pallor, faintness, giddiness, dilation of pupils, paroxysmal dyspnea, rapid, intermittent and weak pulse, nausea and vomiting, intense prostration verging on collapse, and convulsions. The patient may recover if allowed to remain in a recumbent position, but stimulants by mouth, e.g. ammonia, and the hypodermic injection of brandy or ether may be necessary, with the inhalation of nitrate of amyl. For care in the prescribing of cocaine, see under the Dangerous Drugs Act, 1920, page 82. The cocaine habit consists in the self-administration of the drug hypodermically, it induces excitement, which is followed by prostration. In time, melancholia or mania develops with great irritation of the skin. Cocaine bugs. End of chapter 15